Hello everyone and welcome to so many games real time. Today we will be unboxing Europa Universalis The Price of Power. I've been waiting for this for a long time so I'm happy it is here um, and you can see I haven't unboxed it too much yet because I just want to show that I really like that they put it's VFI by the way during the shipping. I really like that they put this thing here because when you cut open you can see here the line it'll block and then it won't hit the bubble wrap or the boards or whatever so it's really important to me so i just wanted to point that out that i like that so this is all the stuff that's in there you can see it is quite a bit so we have this just gonna put it all quickly to the side now we'll talk about it more later this 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 it's a lot this and this very important and then oh my god this one it's very heavy so put this out of the way i'm going to take off the bubble wrap and i will be right back so this is everything that was in the parcel that I ordered. Now there is no extra large play mat. You can see that because they all, those were made in, or those are being made in Poland. So they will come later at a, at a different shipment. So we have the base game, uh, huge box, heavy box, three extra die sets, extra bot decks and metal coins. Now these ones I'll do at the end, but of course, first we're gonna check out this one, yay. Okay, so here we have it, Europa Universalis, The Price of Power, Deluxe Edition, solo mode by David Turchi, Govern, Trade, Conspire, Conquer, and of course a game by uh, Avent Vetlesen, Paradox Interactive, of course from the video games, and Eager Games. So it looks really nice at the moment, so let's take a look at the sides. So here we go. I'm uh, sorry about the glare, but you know, it's just my house. Cannot really do much about that. There we go. Deluxe edition. One to six players. 90 plus minutes. 14 plus. Here you go, games. And then basically the same. And I imagine the other side is also the same. Yes. Kind of, yeah. Just from the other side. Here you go. And let's take a look at the back of the box. Here we go. So you can see includes five to six player expansion plus H4. Yeah, Viva la Revolucion. And the Lux Edition contents also looks pretty nice. Okay, let's. I'm gonna flip it all over and let's see what's inside. Okay, before we continue, I should add that um, I am not. Uh, I wasn't asked to be a reviewer or whatever for this game at all. It's just that I live in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is next to China and that is where the games are produced. That is why I have my copy now. So it's not an advanced copy in any way. Uh, just, just, you know, proximity. The closer you live to the factory, the faster you get it. And I should also add that this game was in our top 20 of game, uh, Kickstarters that we are very anxious of getting as quickly as possible, you know, uh, with me and Evangelos. I'll put the links down, down below. And uh, if you're interested in what other Kickstarters will come to the channel, of course, as well, you can check that out. Okay, now let's just continue. So Europa Universal is the price of power. Let's see what's inside. I think there might be art on the inside of the box. We'll see. I was wrong. Too bad, too bad, too bad. So I'll put this here so it's easier to check out the rules. Okay. And there are quite a number of things here. Okay. First of all, the solo and butt rules, which is already quite meaty, it seems. All right. But of course, that should also make it more interesting. The bot trade, what the bot does, all the details, the bot actions, substitute bots. That's interesting. Okay, all different actions. I like these, these though, it should make it a little bit easier. But I imagine when you play solo, you're gonna have to use this quite a bit. Look at the military action. Wow, and diplomacy. <laughs> all right. Uh, naval action, Papal Curie action, explore action, spy action. Unrest, there's a lot of actions that the bot can do. Yeah. 
And I'm sure the more you play, the easier it will uh, become to use. Uh, okay, so here are the rules. A lot of stuff in there. Okay, the map board. So this part is deluxe edition only, okay? Uh, it mentions it here. All right. And you can see, of course, this uh, it's quite sprawling. So uh, it's quite big, I mean. Yeah, Seekers of Play. All right. I, for one, am very excited because I don't have this type of game in my collection yet, like a a war game, I would say, because I think even though you can do a bunch of stuff, I think military will still be quite a big uh, part of it. And also the way the game works, it's like you have one action, then another person has an action, another person has an action, you keep going around until everyone has taken an event, and then you pass. But my point is that people could just attack you out of the blue, right? So, peace resolution, peace terms, and even if there is like a piece on the board, apparently after the round it disappears. So peace is only is always temporary, it seems. Maybe not always, but at least in the examples I've seen. Rebels, religion and faith, events, event guidelines, character mortality, I like that as well. Because if certain events come out, some rulers will become older and they might even die. So people might actually choose to take an event to kill off your leader. <laughs> Okay, two player games and bots, no bots variant, Papal controller should also be really interesting. And here we have, of course, all the uh, iconography, which is a fair bit. Uh, not just that, it's uh, sorry, not it's just game components actually, which is uh, quite a bit as well. Yeah. All right, so here we have scenarios one and two. I guess we should do one first. Uh, it says also the playtime depends on the number of players, the number of ages in the scenario. So it's about 10 minutes per player per round, um, so if you know the rules fairly well. And bots play much faster once you're familiar with the bot charts. So, yeah. All right, so that all, all adds to it, of course. This all just prepares you for the scenario. For example, introductory scenario, three players. Um, yeah, so key information, time period. Yeah, all right. Discovery and Reformation for players. That might be the one that I play first. Imperial Waltz, three players and a bot. Sea Route to India, four players. The Wars of Religion, three to four players. Yeah. The Bourbonic Plague, oh, nice. Six rounds. And this, the Ambitious Margrave solo is 12 rounds. Okay. Bot realm targeting charts. So we have the Austria bot, the Castille bot. So they all uh, kind of react differently, which is nice. France bot and England bot. Of course, it has to do with the places they're in as well. A realm in Ireland, a France, Picardy, Portugal, Aragon, Netherlands bot, Brandenburg bot. Too bad there's no Flanders bot, but we were so tiny, so it doesn't really matter. So you see the major powers and here as well. And then we have the scenarios, the second one. And apparently these are recommended to be used by experienced players. While well, my fridge is suddenly making a lot of noise. All right. So they're suited for four to six players and also experienced uh, players. Okay, cool. The grand campaign. That sounds awesome. 16 rounds. So, uh, yeah. That should uh, take quite a bit. <laughs> Team variant, okay. Enemy at the gates. Medi Mediterranean dominance. There's always a team variant, it seems. Napoleon rising, that is nice. Cool. And then you see the realm setups. So yeah, someone is gonna be Napoleon, of course. Here I stand once more, okay. The Rise of the Purple Phoenix, a solo, 16 rounds. The Rise of Byzantium, actually. Nice. Glory for Ulm, 16 rounds. Oh, yeah. And then once again, the targeting charts for the Muscovy bot, Russia bot, Ottoman bot, Poland bot, Kalmar bot. 
Sweden bot, Burgundy bot, Venice bot, and Mamluk bots. And then also Bohemia bot, Hungary bot, Lithuania bot, and Novgorod bot. Cool. And then here we have all the realms. Nice. And then also the unfeatured ones, sadly. Okay. Um, let's see. Is it anywhere? Uh, okay, cool. So then this is, of course, player aids. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six of them with all the actions. Okay, these are the basic actions. There's also some free actions, um, which I don't really see immediately. And then here, uh, well, everything else, Casus Belly and so on, Battle Sequence. So yeah, there's going to be... I think learning this is going to be a chore, but I'm hoping, I'm pretty sure it's going to be nice once you get it. So, once again, realms of the Western Europe map, on the Western Europe's map, and then distant continents. Yeah. Nice. So is Flanders here anywhere? I guess it's part of the Netherlands at that time. Netherlands, Netherlands, Friesland, Magdeburg, Liège and Flanders, there we go, and Brabant, cool, there's three Belgian areas, okay, anyway, peace resolution, and the other side would be war, maybe, battle, yeah, of course, battle and peace, okay, cool, now let's continue and see what else is in here, um, Let's start off with these here. So I'm going to open this. So, Army 1, Army 2, Army 3, and Fleet. In the back. So, this is basically for every color. Yeah, for every color. Yeah. And it's not really worth it to go into detail because the, all the miniatures are also the same. All right, so just all the different colors. So I'll put this on the side. And then, uh, well, let's take this out first. I'm going to keep it here. I'm not sure if we're supposed to keep it or not, but I'll put it on the side. Uh, I'll throw it away just yet. So these are the dice. Um, and obviously, you already know I bought some extra dice, but I'm going to cut it open. I'll be right back. So here are the dice. These ones are the uh, unrest dice, if I'm not mistaken. So for every unrest you have, you when you have unrest in a province or whatever, you roll the dice and see what happens. You might lose some influence, you might lose some monarchy power, or some other stuff. All right. But then these, I imagine they're more like battle dice. Uh, you see the units on them, All right? And this one is just one, 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 two, and three. <laughs> and two is also, yeah, I guess, maybe some losses. I'm not sure. This, this one, just guessing, okay? Like, I know some of the rules, but I definitely don't know all of them yet. So, put this on the side. And then next up, let's just do this stack. This one is the status mats. So, basically, is what's going on in the game. Like, you have the round status. Everybody will be here. The moment someone takes an event, their token will go here. If everyone has taken an event, then the chances of passing will be higher and the round will end. You cannot pass unless you've taken an event. The Imperial Authority, uh, the Papal Cura, depending on who is where and so on. And the Power Struggle. If there's an active Power Struggle, it would be here. And the back is just Europa Universalis. Okay. So these are the player boards. You can see different colors. There is no difference as far as I can see in the boards. They're not asymmetric. Asymmetric, but I'm sure that will change with the setup because you have so many advisors that you get and so on. So, you know, that will change. Okay. And the back is like this. And this, this is for bots, as you can see. So obviously there's six boards, so you can play up to six, about five bots. I guess maybe six if you have enough de decks and then just see who wins <laughs> for a full bot game, see what happens. So yeah, it looks nice, double, uh, you can see double layered, right? So cool, very, very nice. 
And then we have all this. So let's start with this one. Obviously, this is a general tray. Um, these are black. So I'm guessing these will be like um, the Rebels and so on. Because the videos I saw, they're cubes. But in this case, it will just be actual guys, all right? Actual troops. So they're in here. So I guess I'm just going to put them back there. And here we have some markers. Okay. You can see in the star and the flag. I'm just quickly checking what they are. They are the flags are rebel towns. So the, the flags are rebel towns. Okay. But then the others, the stars, I'm just having a quick check here because I can't immediately find it. Yeah, I don't know what it is yet. I don't immediately see it, what the stars are. So if I find it later on, I'll let you know. If not, I'm sure maybe it's just specific to a scenario. All right, first player marker is here. It is quite thick. It's a nice chunk of wood, first player. Okay, here, I guess. There might be something somewhere that tells us how to do it, but so four regular gray cubes. So. And then here, just also for the rebels, we have the rebel ships. Yeah. So I'm going to put them separately because otherwise the black might be difficult to see what you're actually taking. Don't know what the orange is all about. Don't know what these are. The orange guys. Ah, mercenary units. They are mercenary units. Okay, cool. All right, so I'll close this up for now. Although I think the dice probably go in here as well, maybe, most likely. Um, but yeah, I guess I should figure that out later, even though I'm continuing to do it now. Yeah, no, what I'm thinking is not correct, so whatever. I'll have to figure that out later. Yep, to the side, let's continue. Here, of course, we have the player colors. So the player boards, well not the boards, but the trays. So you can see the cubes here, these are for influence. Here we have the unrest tokens and so on, uh, in various styles. Yeah, I don't know what all of them are, to be honest. You have the ships here, you have the troops, you have the larger miniatures, okay. And then, Three empty spots, which I guess something else will come. Maybe it could be, you know, probably not dice. This is really tiny. Maybe it's when you want to save a game. I'm just, I'm just guessing here. You know, if I find out what it is, I'll, uh, I'll let you know. Or maybe I'll do a reboxing to see where everything goes. Okay. So it's the same for everything. I'll just open it and just uh, put it a bit closer so you can take a look. But I'm not going to go into detail and everything. I do like the colors. They're quite vibrant. I think they should pop nicely on the board. Okay. Aha, uh -huh. and here we see other stuff coming. The punch boards, of course. Oh, there's one just coming out here. There you go. All right. And then yellow. Okay. Yeah, this is my second big game because it just had mosaic as well. And it's also a huge map of Europe and the world, actually, I should say. So red. There you go. 
Both are games that I can't just play in the evening. <laughs> Both too long, it takes some time. Okay, so there's a punch board here. Actually, there's not many, just three of them, but I'm gonna take off the plastic. Okay, so here we are. Now, of course, some of these tokens will not be used because with the deluxe version, some of them might have replacements. But for example, the coins, you already saw that I have the, uh, the coin, uh, the metal coins, so those will not be used. But that's what happens when you get a deluxe version. Uh, often some of the punch boards are no longer necessary. Or the punch tokens, I mean. Okay, there's a lot of stuff though to go through. Yeah. This game is not gonna be for the faint of heart. So, yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. For example, all these tokens in the different colors, they probably also won't be used, I imagine. Okay, so stuff falling out. And then we have the map. So what I'm gonna do with the map is, at the different parts of the map, I am going to put it on the, on the table at the end. So I'm gonna do all of this first. And the other bags, at the end, I'll put out the table, uh, the, the board. Otherwise, I have to move too much stuff right now. So I have to wait a little bit or use the time st stamps to, uh, you know, jump forward if you're impatient. All right, I'm going to take off all the plastic of these cards and I'll get back to you. Okay, so all the uh, plastic is gone. So let's take a look at the cards. So normally, I only l look at the art because otherwise it would take hours, right? So here, these cards, they're just uh, double-sided. I think these are events. Well, this is a player aid, but or maybe not because there are people on the bottom. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure. These are more level four cards. So I guess these might be just player aids, I guess. Yeah, I oh, know this might just be the regent. I'm just guessing now. I guess it'll come out when we <laughs> be clear when we're actually playing the game. These are events, however. So you're gonna have an option of choosing an event every every round, and then you choose A or B. Most of the time, if it's applicable to you, you're gonna choose A. If it's someone else, you probably choose B. So you have Captain Jenkins' ear, Voyages of Mar James Cook, Mississippi Bubble, Revolutionary Ideologists, Rise of an Empire, the re Reactionary Policy, and I'm gonna move this a bit. Uh, otherwise it's too difficult. Uh, the Tulip pur Period, The Lion of Yanina, The Silent Session, The Governments Act, Rise of Pietism, Strunsi Regency, The Age of Liberty, The Enlightened Despot, Great Lisbon Earthquake, The Brazilian Court, Second Stadtholders Period. You can see every card also has a number, so I'm sure you're going to have to take out certain numbers. Decline of the Old Republic, Suppression of the Jesuits, Risorgimento, An Army with a State, Reform Movement, Treaty of Pasarovitz, The Last Doge of Venice. Because of internet, this really makes me think of the dog. Uh, Quasimites and Ficarites, Reinventing Egypt, Protector of the Orthodox. Greek Revolution, Seven Letters of Nouveau, that's cool, <laughs> WC, all right, and then those cards from before, I guess these are more scenarios that you get at the start, yeah, because probably what you have is your religion, your provinces, your influence, relations, merchants, and your starting ruler, okay, that makes more sense, all right, so I'll put this back, next one, more events, um, I guess maybe these are events are, are linked to these certain uh, scenarios. So if comets cited, global trade, privateers, disputed succession, plague, decadent government, a Protestant union, divine right of kings, border friction, volatile cost fluctuations, East India Company, royal letter of Bohemia, the scientific revolution, treacherous general, Ottoman invasion, corsairs, brilliant rebel commander, influential minister, witch trials, Acts of Trade and Navigation, Diplomatic Crisis, the Catholic League, Noble Revolt in Hungary, the Iberian Revolts, Decline of the Habsburgs, the English Civil War, the Glorious Revolution, the Huguenot uh, rebel Rebellions, Protestants Expelled, Coup d'etat in Lisbon, 
Brazilian gold rush, Dutch golden age, power politics, dream of Italian autonomy, grand administrative reform, sovereign rule in Prussia, edict of Potsdam. And then once again, all these starting uh, areas, basically, and what they have and who they start with. All right. So then I have another deck and they start with the exact same card. They also start with comments cited, but the other cards seem to be different. So these have all this in the back and then it's level two. So comment cited again, but the description is different though. Council of Trent, plague, disputed succession, the reformation spreads, religious turmoil, revolts in the low countries, Dutch declare independence, border friction, Corsairs, Barbarossa the Corsair, smallpox epidemic, the new world beckons, that's cool. Volatile cost fluctuations, imperial intervention, Ottoman invasion. So some of them have come back. Privateers, rich trials, lost jousting tournament, Portuguese colonization, flourishing trade, a Scandinavian power, the Shadow Kingdom, League of Schmalkalden, the Italian Wars II, the Portuguese crown, the Act of Supremacy, the Virgin Queen, claims in Italy, wars of religion, conflict in Indian Ocean, King Sebastião's expedition, wave of iconoclasm, Act of Abjuration, the League of Cognac, Resurgent Papacy, Secularization of Prussia, Lack of Heirs in Nearby Lands. And these are these other ones. Revolutionary Ideas. Those are all revolutionary ideas. Okay, cool. All right, but they do have different leaders at the bottom. Well, not, uh, some are leaders, some are not. Okay, next. The back, we have more of these revolutionary ideas, I guess. Well, they're all revolutionary ideas. No, not all of them. These seem to be battle cards. So, Naval Maneuver, Naval Maneuver, Naval Maneuver, one step ahead. Siege Assault, Superior Tactics, Tactical Retreat. Okay. And then these are the ideas, right? Although, oh, there's one more. <laughs> tactical Retreat. Central Authority. Development, exceptional year, commercial growth, harbor refugees, or not harbor, harbor refugees, increased stability, man of the church. Okay. And then we still have two, five, seven, nine, eleven decks to go. This game has cards. So these look like peace cards, right? Not only peace, because these are war. So the war ones, forced march, inspired leadership, logistics master, mercenaries. So even though these all seem the same, the description is the same, but then the bottom has different people. Carl Augustus, Svante, Urban, uh, military reforms, military traditions, and look, it's our good friend Louis. But we don't know if it's the 14th. All right. And then here are the peace ones, I guess. New Alliance. Royal Marriage. Spy Network. Study Technology. Subjugate. That's it. Okay. Oh, and this deck I forgot to open. Well, no, at least one deck will be opened on the unboxing. There we go. So it's it's really good they have this. It makes it actually go quite fast to remove it. All right, so we have these trade cards. They're all trade cards. They're all trade cards, yeah. Chinaware, cloth. And you always see the, the, the key provinces that have it, so where you can trade for it. So cloth, cocoa, coffee, copper, cotton, dyes, fish, fur, glass, gold, grain, iron, ivory, livestock, naval supplies, paper, salt, silk, slaves, spices, sugar, tea, tobacco, wine, and wool. All right. So there we go. And then we have the arrows. So I have four and two and one, but I guess it's be four and three then. Yeah, there we go. So are these more events? No, not necessarily. 
Some of them might be. Yeah, actually, yeah, some of them. I guess they're all events. I'm not sure. I think so. The Enlightenment, Industrial Revolution, Disputed Succession, Congress of Vienna, Decline of L'Ancien Regime, Vive la Révolution, Soaring Bread Prices, The Rights of Man, Corruption in the Colonies, Discontented Bourgeoisie, Mass Desertion, Military Conscription, Grand Coalition, Coup within the Coup, Declaration of Independence, Reign of Terror, the Pragmatic Sanction, the Metternich System, Nueva Planta Decrees, Constitution of Cadiz. That's four and three. Tatar Rage, three. Russian Imperial Expansion, Raisin's Cossack Uprising, uprising. Reforms of Peter the Great, Janissary Coup, New Military Ideas, Khmelnytsky Uprising, Ending the Stagnation, Mercantile Reforms, Betrayal of Korfitz Ulfeldt, Reforms of Gustav Adolf, or Adolf, The Carolian Army, Great Plague, Plague of Milan, Ottoman Convoy, Ottoman Convoy Plundered, Factional Power Struggle, Bedouin Raiders, Revival of the Crusades, Smyrna Earthquake, Those Wacky Austrians, it's <laughs> cool, and Sick Transit Gloria Mundi, Gloria Mundi. All right. Cool. I guess these would it be from backers or what? Because they have very silly stuff at the bottom. All right. Let's take a look at age two. Tatar raids one. Struggle for Novgorod. This is all three. Oh, this is one actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. So two and one. So first two. Tatar raids two. Carpathian principalities. The Oprichnina, the Oprichnina, 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 Time of Troubles, Suleiman the Magnificent, Janissaries demand pay, Inheritance of Mazovia, Pacta Conventa, The Count's Feud, Growth of Dutch Trade, Church and State Reforms, The Stewart Murders, The League of Cambrai, Spice Trade Threatened, Deceitful Governors, Pilgrims and Merchants, Genoese Relations, Caesaropapism, Friendship, Friendship Wagon, what? And Seeing the Light. All right. So that's one and two. And then we still have one. And this one and some more peace cards. Okay, so. Comet Sighthead, again, so many comments. Black Army of Hungary, Imperial Intervention, Revolts, Disputed Succession. So some keep coming back. The Peasants' War, Border Friction, Bur Burgundian Succession Crisis, Disloyal Allies, Nobles Demand Privileges, Unhappy Artisans, Unhappy Peasants, Heretics, The Renaissance, Religious Zeal, Death of Charles the Bold, The Neapolitan Succession, The Printing Press, The Hungarian Throne, the Italian Wars, one. Iberian Wedding. Christopher Columbus. Wars of the Roses. The Lollard Heresy. End of Hundred Years' War. Claim to the Throne of Naples. The Duke of Coimbra. Ah, Coimbra. Casa da India. Land Reclamation. Dutch Renaissance. The Pazzi Conspiracy. Nepotism of the Borgias. The Fate of Newmark. And Succession of Stettin. All right, and then we have counter-espionage, 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 naval traditions, yeah, okay. So, 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 put this here, that's it, yeah. And then we have all the small cards. So I think the small cards will go a lot faster because they don't really have art. Like these are events, but I think this is the bot deck because you have a little bot face and the, all the stuff they do, event, you know, events, military, diplomacy, explore, spy, focus. So they do a bunch of stuff, these bot decks, and they all have numbers uh, as well. 24, for example, at the bottom. And then here, I don't really know what these are. I don't know what these are. Church attendance duty, inquisition. Um, ah, this is what you're supposed to have, maybe? Is it like, uh, no, I don't know what it is. And then we have 
the these I think these are objectives like merchant fleet occupy four plus trade protection slots adjacent to each of two different trade nodes then the first person who does it gets five points the next person gets three and then one and then nothing but you also get plus two uh, ideas if I'm not mistaken so we have a bunch of them as you can see lots of them different colors I guess maybe from different eras I'm not sure and some are really specific I guess like the Holy League you know, then they have a bunch of stuff as well. Yeah, so I think some of them are general. Some of them will be given to you. Uh, yeah, see here, missions for France, uh, missions for England, missions for Castille, missions for Austria. And then these are the general ones. Milestones. Is it milestones expansion? What does it say? Yeah, expansion. Oh, okay, and economics, yeah. So it's not, it's not an expansion as in a board game expansion. It's just... You have to expand in the game. All right, these are more missions, I guess. Our power struggles, missions for Portugal, for the Nether. I'm not gonna go over these, okay? Generic missions. So generic mission, for example, Imperial Religious Unity. Yeah. So a lot of and more France missions. So I'm not really gonna go through this because I think that's something that's cool to just also discover as you're playing the game what the missions have. Power struggle cards are like this, the Italian Wars, Distant Trade, 30 Years War, and then it goes on the board. Remember the power struggle board, and then I guess it goes into effect what it does. All right, next deck is missions for Russia, the Mamluks, Denmark. These are all just missions for the different, and also some uh, different factions, but also you do have regular ones that people can go for. Have research with revolutionary regime idea. With 30 plus ducats and 30 plus ducats and no decrease of money in your treasury. I don't know, whatever. So yeah, all basic missions, 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 and some more missions or objectives, I should say. Same here, more milestones and, and objectives, but well, all uh, and ideas as well. Are these ideas? Yeah, okay. Bureaucracy, scientific revolution, absolute monarchy. Yeah, you know, I don't want to go through this. Like I said, there's no art. I don't really see the advantage. It's just also cool to discover while you're playing. This is the last deck. More power struggles. Missions for Portugal, the Commonwealth, Pol Poland, Papal States, Ottomans, Russia. So a lot more missions. And more power struggles, like for example, the Seven Years' War. Okay, anyway. So I'm going to take back the box because I've actually done all the cards in here now and I always check the bottom of the box to see if there's something there which would be a little bit of a challenge here with all these cards. should probably take them out first. Um, but I am a stubborn person so that's exactly what I'm not going to do. Oh, they're going to fall out, I'm afraid. No, they will not. There's nothing underneath. No, there's nothing underneath. Okay. Oh, that was tricky. All right, so there's nothing underneath. And uh, now I will put out, no, I will check the baggies, the other stuff, and then we will take a look at the board. First up is the extra dice set, the Juego Extra de Dados. Um, I don't speak Spanish. I hope that was good. okay. <laughs> so I'm just gonna cut this open. There we go. And here are the dados. So of course they don't come in a baggie. Um, so they, I don't know if there's necessarily space in the box for them, to be honest. I'd have to check. But as you can see, they're just the same, right? Just an extra set of dice. I have two more, just so everybody has their own dice. You don't have to pass it around and it will speed up the game a little bit. But for games like this, if it gets sped up at all, it's always a plus. Then we have the metal coins, coins or the monedas metallicas, and uh, let's open this one up. I think this, these ones will be able to go in the trades, obviously. They are heavy, I'll tell you this. Uh, and they come in baggies, which is nice. Oh, and I like these, they're so detailed. They look so detailed. Okay, some golden ones, the ducats, it says here, 
potestas, H-S-T, orum, orum potestas. And then some other stuff that I'm not going to try to say, but they look really nice. Look at the details on these. And the weight is nice as well. So these are the golden ones. Then we have the silver ones. Here they are. Oh, I like I like the lion. Uh, really cool coins. And then last but not least, the bronze coins. There's a lot of these. Kind of has to be. Yeah, really cool. Yeah. Nice. All right, so that basically concludes the unboxing, except for the board. So that is what I'm going to do next. I was going too fast because I forgot the extra botex. The Barajas Extra de Bot. So, let's see. The extra bot deck. I don't even know if or bot decks. I don't even know if there's space in the box for this. I hope so. So this is bot five, I guess. So we have bot five, bot four, bot three. Yeah, so three for five. So, you know, I already showed you these, to be honest. Military Diplomacy, Explore, and rest, and so on, so on. So basically just three decks to be able to play with five bots. I'm looking forward to trying it, honestly. Yeah, should be cool. Again, okay, now we'll do the game board. Okay, so I really had to zoom out. There's a shadow here because of the trays that I put there. But as you can see, it is pretty huge. It's also double-sided. This is a 1444 1444 setup. Um, this one is here, 4444 setup. So you can flip it over, all of it, and then have a different setup. So this part has to go here because you have A, B, C. Uh, this for the, um, um, I guess, is just to show where you're going to uh, explore, potentially. Um, let's see what the other side says. So, this is the 1618 setup. So I'm going to flip this as well. So you can see the difference. So 1618 setup. And then here. There we go. So there's a 1618 setup. So as you might be able to see from this, there's no way I can just play this at home. My table is too small. Like I still have maybe this amount of space there. So I can put some stuff there, but in general, my table is definitely too small for this. Um, so when the extra large play mat comes, <laughs> I definitely won't be able to play it. But that's okay because games like these that take a long time, I don't play at my house anyway. I play it somewhere else. So yeah. That is it. The game looks crazy, but then in a crazy good way. So I'm very curious to uh, to try it out, to be honest. Yeah, okay. So this was the end of the unboxing of Europa Universalis. One thing I forgot to check during my unboxing is the side of the inside of the box. So the inner box, and because the art is really, really nice, as you can see here. Something I tend to forget during unboxings to actually check the inside of the box or the inner box or the sides. And it is really, really cool. So I wanted to add that, even though the quality might be less, but still worth it. So the end of the unboxing of Europe, Europa Universal is the Prize of Power, Deluxe Edition. Uh, I might even play it tomorrow already. I don't know. It depends if I can get through the rules a bit uh, before then. But I am definitely eager. I really want to play this. Um, 
yeah i've been playing uh cfr championship formula racing as my long game at the moment but i only have to do one more and then i'll have time to do this and then uh, yeah so you can look forward to that uh because i definitely am all right that's it my name is joachim so so many games for the time thank you very much for watching and do also think about subscribing and i'll see you next time okay bye bye